Hi, this is Mark Mosier, and in this video I want to show you a little bit of set management and also how to archive and restore a set from the hardware from the Ableton Move. As it stands right now, the Move Manager does let you download a set from here, but it doesn't let you restore it. So in order to do it, you need to take a few extra steps with Ableton Cloud with an iOS device. So first off, you need to make sure you have Ableton Cloud enabled, and I have that enabled on my iOS device. And if I hit Shift and Setup, which is the gear, you can see I have Cloud on for the Ableton Move. If you press Shift in this button, you're gonna see your set overview. Right now, I just have one empty set in this entire device. It can hold up to 32 sets locally, so that's an important concept of local storage versus cloud storage. This can hold 32, you can see the 32 pads. If I hold shift and go back to set overview, you can see how there's my set. If I want to create a new set, I just press the next pad. You can also duplicate sets. So here's the copy button. I can copy this and paste it there. So that's basic set management. You'll notice I have two sets in here right now and a blank set at the beginning and all these blanks. Uh, if I were to upload something from the cloud, from let's say my iPad here, let's go ahead and play this just so you can hear it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload that to the cloud. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna load that over here on the hardware because we have cloud sync enabled. There it is. So it puts it in the first blank slot it finds. If, if these would have been full, it would have put it here. If you would have had five sets in Ableton Cloud, it would have loaded the five sets here to the right and so on up the row. Just a note that uh, up until recently, Ableton Note could only store five sets and now they've increased the limit to eight sets. So there we go. We have two local sets. We have one in the cloud and I'm going to go ahead and open this so we can see it on the iPad mini. And if I play this row, you can see there's three clips. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press session view. Oops, I have to select the right. All right, I'm going to select the set here, go to session view, and you can see the clips are here, but it orients it differently. So this is more like Ableton Live where the tracks go this way and the scenes rows go this way. This is the opposite. So these are the tracks and this would be a scene right here. So if I hit play, just using the onboard speaker for this. Okay. Let's say we want to modify the baseline a little bit. So I'm going to make a copy of the baseline. So I hit the copy button and I'm going to paste that here. And now I have a copy of that baseline. If I hit play, it's playing these clips plus this new one. Hasn't synced over here yet. If I were to go down into um, this track and then use capture to add some notes, oh, you can see it knows I'm editing. So it's sort of giving me this warning that this is gonna be being edited on another device. So I'm gonna go ahead and use capture to add a couple of other notes. I'm gonna hit shift, quantize, put them on the beat. Go back to session view. So now you can see my new clips running. It has some notes in it. And magically, this syncs. If you're between the move and note, these sets stay in sync. That's not true yet on Ableton Live itself. If you go to Ableton Live and go to cloud and then attempt to do the same maneuver where you added some notes and then you went to save it, it doesn't sync, it tries to save it locally. And I think that's to protect you from trying to move a huge Ableton Live set down to either uh, note or move. So that's just a little note. But so if I now I open up this, you can see there's the baseline I just added. I'm going to stop that. So now here's the cool part. Let's say you fill this up and you've used all 32 of your slots, or you want to repurpose this to go maybe do a session, do a jam at a friend's house. You want to 
offload some sets and put them back later. And more importantly, if you run out of slots, what do you do? And as I mentioned, this is limited storage to 32. Over here, you can simply say, remove from Ableton Cloud. And what it tells you is it's gonna move it to local storage. And just like that, you now have eight slots free. And if you notice, if I pick one of these sets, it's gone. It's literally moved from the cloud. So later on, if you want to reconfigure what's in the hardware version here on Move, you can simply put it back. So that's how you do a restore. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-upload it to the cloud. I'm gonna move this one to the cloud. So what's gonna see, you'll see uh, one's gonna go here, one's gonna go here. So there you go, that's how you re restore a set. You store them with unlimited storage here and when you're ready to move them back, you simply use your iPad or iOS device to resync them to the cloud. So here's this new set as well. I can also go the other way where I use the move to upload to the cloud. So if I press shift set review, here are my sets. These two are local. If I shift press the pad, it says, do you want to upload this to the cloud? I'm going to say yes. So this originated on the hardware and I'm telling it to come over here and be in the cloud, which would make it visible to iOS or Ableton. There you go. I can also remove it from the cloud storage using the move. If I hold shift and pad, it knows it's a cloud stored, so I can make it local again. Bring it back this way. It removes it from Ableton Cloud and stores it locally here. So in summary, using the move with Ableton Note in iOS, with Wi-Fi, using Ableton Cloud, you can sync your work, pick it up, move it back and forth between the devices. Should you start running out of slots here, you could cloud sync whatever set you want to back up and then remove it from the cloud, which would put it in local storage on the iPad, which is near unlimited. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Swing by markmosiermusic.com. Uh, it's a little easier to remember the URL, modulatethis.com. I've got some blog posts I'm already doing on the move and I have all sorts of blog posts on Ableton over there. Thanks for watching and have fun with your move.